Emmy said to me once, I don't know what to tell my friends. I said, you should just tell them. And Emmy's like, dad, I'm in second grade. I'm gonna tell them I have nephrotic syndrome. They're not gonna know what the hell I'm talking about. I'm like, mm, that's okay, that's a good point. <laughs> well, why don't you just tell them you have a kidney disease? And she's like, dad, nobody knows what that is. <laughs> How am I gonna tell them that? I'm like, well, you just tell them that, you know, and as I started talking, I'm like, yeah, the kidneys are leaking proteins, which cause the sweat. And I'm going on, I'm like, yeah, what am I saying? Like, she can't tell a second grade. When I just tell like my classmates, like a high school student, I'll just say, sometimes my kidneys will just randomly stop working. But when I tell like an adult and someone like looking for a thorough answer, I'll say. In nephrotic syndrome, what happens is there's damage to the kidneys and you start leaking protein and proteins which your body depends on are leaked from the kidney, come in the urine and are lost to the body. There's no real cause, there's no real cure. Probably the most common complaint is swelling. Swelling of the eyes, swelling of the feet, sometimes it's swelling of the abdomen, but the most common thing is actually swollen eyes. His eyes started swelling up. Well, actually, the first time we took him to the doctor, they thought it was an allergic reaction. Oh, let's just try a few things, didn't work. Took him back to the doctor, checked his urine. She came back in the room and said, he has something called nephrotic syndrome. It was the day after her dress rehearsal. In dress rehearsal, they put all the makeup on. And I woke her up to get ready for school, and she was really puffy. I looked in the mirror, and I'm like, oh my god. So then I got my mom and dad, of course. And then they thought it was the makeup, so they didn't let me have the makeup the next day. So and then it happened again. Uh, my sister couldn't say Christian when I was first born. So I said Chichen, and that turned to Chi Chi. Oh, yeah. But then my Spanish teacher told me what it meant in Spanish. Then my mom wouldn't let me call him that anymore. What does it mean in Spanish? Boobs. <laughs> so then it just turned into Cheech and it stuck. It just stuck. So I was diagnosed when I was two. Our pediatric doctor said, I think this might be something called nephrotic syndrome. And he said, your son is very sick. I have nephrotic syndrome and I can, it's gonna be with me most likely my whole life. I didn't really want anyone to know. I don't know why, but now a lot of people know. I just didn't want anyone to ask me questions or be like, why do you have this? So you didn't even tell your friends? No. Jordan used to be very outspoken about it, but not so much now. But I think he just wants to be a kid. He wants to be a kid at school and don't <laughs> wants to talk about anything that he feels that's a little bit different from what other kids have. I kind of got famous at my school. I mean, they knew like something was wrong because you don't just gain like 50 pounds in the span of like two weeks, three weeks. It's made me miss a lot of school. He's been hospitalized five times. He's doing, is that his homework or is that an extra workbook? His homework. We're missing class right now. Oh, okay. Doing extra work. Sometimes I had to miss school, but not a lot. Usually I was at the doctor's. It's really It's scary for other parents. Not contagious. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of like, it's not contagious. Most of the time the symptoms are pretty much the same, right? The swelling of the face and body. I feel like that's the one thing a lot of us have in common. But then what happens afterwards is completely different. Since there isn't a cure, there's just different, call it treatments, that they want to try to see what works. And, you know, as a parent, you're not used to that. You go to the doctor because there's a broken arm, and what do they do? They fix it in a chronic disease. There isn't a fix. There's just things that you hope will work to keep the kidneys functioning and hopefully put you into remission for some you know, length of time. With prednisone, which is our most useful drug, we suppress the immune system and allow it to reboot, hopefully with the nephrotic syndrome going away. Prednisone really does a great job in helping control the nephrotic syndrome but it's not without its side effects. Emotionally, it took him on a little bit of a roller coaster. He would go from zero to 10 and like throw the computer, like really go into a rage. Are you having a tantrum or are these the drugs that are affecting you? Yeah, I got really crazy, like interrupting the teacher. She'd wake up at five in the morning and she'd come in and be like standing over us like a creepy possessed child. I'm bored. And I just make books in the morning or and just write them. So when I'm on prednisone, I'll get like super hungry. Mm. His eating habits changed. He stayed hungry. I had finally had to put up a food schedule. She would sit sometimes by the clock and the food schedule wow. and she would just wait. It makes you want to eat, mm -hmm. but it also gives you a moon face and it makes his cheeks really red and flush. She, she, your medicine makes you get a bad sunburn, even with the sunscreen on. In a child who is still nephrotic, still having leak of protein in their urine after six weeks to two months of prednisone therapy, they're called a prednisone failure. Because the steroids 
mm-hmm. aren't working as well as they're supposed to. I did do one biopsy. They're going to go in with a tiny little needle and basically take a piece of kidney and examine it under a microscope. And that was to determine whether Emmy had nephrotic syndrome minimal change, which is the good version, uh, versus FSGS, which is the more difficult version and more damaging to the kidneys. It wasn't hard for me, but it was hard for my mom and dad. And then the moment before she went out, she kind of went freaked. And she's like, mommy, dad, and then like went down. And both of us were like, <laughs> She, she kind of woke up and she looked around, just all disoriented, and then she's like, can I have Cheetos? I think that's <laughs> we got the good news that, that she was minimal change after right. that. Christian's had two biopsies. He's got nephrotic syndrome, minimal change. Can we biopsy him? No, no. we mm-hmm. never biopsy him. Oh, okay. Presumably he's minimal change because he's been so responsive to steroids. So we don't biopsy kids unless there's, you know, they're <coughs> having lots of problems. But because the steroids aren't working, then they, they you know, roll out a selection of options of highly toxic different drugs that you have to choose from for the secondary treatment. And when the first drug they mention has toxin in the name of the drug, you're thinking that's probably not the one we want to choose for our kid. Do we want to risk fertility, mm-hmm. uh, brain damage, you know, like all these different things. And so you, re- and that's again where you're like, your kid's looking at you and you're thinking, damn, this is a huge decision. Like mm-hmm. this could affect her in 20 years. They all kind of like, stop me from growing, which kind of sucks. He's a big boy, 52.9 inches. The reason we look at this, Jordan, is because we want to make sure that your medications aren't interfering with your growth. We were told when this all started that to expect one to two to three relapses a year. She's been in remission and we've been lucky there hasn't really been a relapse scare. He typically would have like three to maybe four relapses per year. Christian's had over 40 relapses. When I relapse, I'm retaining water. I get thirsty, but I'm not allowed to drink. I wore like three shirts because nothing fit me. We had a dress up day where we have to like wear a suit and stuff. So I just didn't go to school that day. When you have a relapse, what is that like? Mm, my stomach aches. My stomach hurts, I get headaches. He left school looking like a different person and he started school looking like a different person. Then just coming back to school, like kids were just like, whoa, you have a jawline again. When I relapsed this year, from January to beginning of summer when I started to look like myself, I didn't go out in public. You put any child through with the teenage years, which we all know is rather turbulent, and then you add on some sort of chronic illness and you're gonna have times when the child or the teenager is gonna push back. We were having a constant struggle with him saying, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not going for a blood draw. I'm done with that. Forget all this. And I started just letting him say no, and then I would say, okay, um, I'll be in the, be, be in the car at seven. <clears throat> and sure enough, he'd start creeping out. And that was amazing. Just giving him the power to speak his mind and say, you know, no, I don't really wanna do this. But knowing back in his head that he knew he had to. When you add on any sort of a chronic illness to a family, it's like having another child. We're obviously giving Emmy a lot of attention. And so I was also very aware of like, how are we screwing up Selma? On one hand, siblings are, are, are very compassionate. On the other hand, they're jealous. He's a good big brother. He really, he's there. Um, you know, he's always there by him, right by his side. When he's in the hospital, he's right there. Staying healthy and moving around and being active is really important. What sports do you like, sweetie? Baseball. 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 Jordan is definitely a bookworm. So I push him a little more to um, just come out and try to show him the importance of what working out can do for your body. I like when you work out. So you get all this energy. I play rugby. I ran cross country. I was going to play football, but then I got sick. Football is a passion of his. The best he could do right now is to get to be the football manager for Bellarmine. I love to surf. I love acting. I love dance. When he was little, after every blood draw, he would get a sticker. All these stickers are from... From from every blood draw he's had, and he's had more. When you're 13, you're not getting stickers. So this is like a diary, or...? Pretty much. It was one of the best suggestions that they gave us was get a big notebook, because you're going to need lots of room to write. It's so wonderful when families keep good records. It's easier for us to find things in there than to go like, let me look through the computer. They're dealing with, you know, 
hundreds of patients. These were every blood test and urine test she's ever taken. When you go get second opinions and everything, it's so inefficient. I remember seeing one doctor and he said, thank you for giving me the Dropbox and for that report from your hospital because I'm not even allowed to ask you for it. If you're not proactive about giving them the information, they'll just kind of start fresh and just do what they always do. Sometimes he'll write in the book itself whether he got a negative, you know, he can tell his dad that. You know, we're down to five mLs today, and so it sort of just makes him know what's going on with his body. He's just done a really good job. He sets it all up himself. All the years of the immunosuppressants that he's had to take have weakened his immune system. To give him some form of immune system, he does this IVIG infusion once a week. Dick is in your tummy, Keith. When you can't give your child answers, the best you can do is like get information. By raising money, you feel like you're making a, a dent and helping perhaps find a cure. We always participate in the walk that's local in LA. Zach's mom, Janet, and I, we realized we had children who were the same age. They have the same primary doctor and the same nephrologist. Let's kind of schedule their appointment on the same day. Yeah, that would be, be fun. He said he wanted to be my pen pal. And they met for the first time at our LA walk last year. And they've been inseparable ever since. My school was really like supportive. Cause I miss a lot of school. I had to go to the hospital for my infusion. Then a couple of my friends texted me a picture. There was a banner hanging on the balcony at my school that had my name on it with like a bunch of hearts. So I was like, well, why is there a banner on, with my name on it? They were just praying for him or thinking about him or just, it was great. And there's one great thing about being a kid is that you're young and it's great to be young. The body can rebound from so many things that adults can't handle. If you can hang with it, he or she can live a long life, a healthy life, can do the things that all kids should be able to do and can do, and you can still enjoy life despite having to deal with this sort of chronic illness.